President Dana White here to announce some more badass fights. So, fellas, it is that time again, combat sports this week, where we just have a talk about some fights, some previews, some recaps, things that have gone in this week in combat sports, from fight announcements, just everything that has significantly gone in in combat sports this week, we're going to have a bit of a talk about. Um, so, yeah, we'll start off with some major fight announcements we've had this week. Now, bearing in mind, there will be some from last week that I didn't go over because I didn't get a chance to do last week. So, I've kind of piled on quite a lot of announcements in this week's, but the first major announcement is Michelle Pajero versus Anthony Hernandez. This is the official for you. UFC 3, well, it's not been officially by the UFC, but it's going to happen. UFC 306, September 14th. I actually really like this matchup. I never expected the UFC to do, uh, like, two big prospects against each other. I always thought the UFC were going to go down the route of giving these guys very winnable fights so that they could get close to the top five. But the fact that they're matched up against each other, I'm actually a really big fan of this fight. Two big young prospects in the UFC going against each other. I think it's a really fun fight. They've both got a lot of hype. They're both coming off really good wins. You've got Michelle Pajera, super well-rounded, dangerous on the feet as well. I mean, he uses his striking to set up his submissions. And then you've got Anthony Hernandez, who's one of the best grappling prospects in the UFC. I think it's a really good fight. The winner of this fight is going to get a big big fight in the middleweight division and I know the middleweight division gets a lot of slack for being quite a bad division but let me tell you this, this ain't going to be a bad fight. This is probably one of the best fights you can make in the middleweight division right now so that's a really good fight right there that's been announced this week. Also a main event Actually, you know it's not a main event, but Cyril Garn versus Alexander Volkov. Now, most people were expecting Cyril Garn to be on UFC Paris. Now, that's not the case. We got him in Abu Dhabi this time. Cyril Garn's returning over a year later after his last bout on October 26th against Alexander Volkov. Now, the fight itself, I actually really like this fight because Cyril Garn's not just getting a free win in Marcin Tiberi. Now, he has beaten Volkov before, but I think the rematch, the stakes are much higher. I've talked about this fight in previous videos, and I just really enjoy this matchup between the two of them. It's going to be super competitive and I think the winner will definitely get a title shot and when I say title shot I'm meaning the real champion Tom Aspinall but yeah I'm glad we get to see Cyril Garn back it's been a while he's not just facing another can like Marcin Tabura uh, maybe I need to stop disrespecting Marcin Tabura but you know what I mean he's actually kept facing Volkov who's on a four fight winning streak three of them coming by way of finish Real big fan of this fight right here. And this is on the UFC Abu Dhabi card. I think it's the pay-per-view card, the UFC 3 or 8 card. That's going to be a really fun fight. But talking to Paris and Frenchman, UFC Paris, we do still have a Paris this year. So if you want to go to France, if you want UFC to go to France, you're not going to worry. We've got Hanato Moicano versus Benoit St. Denis for UFC Paris, September 28th. Really good fight right there. Um, I think I, I swear Benoit St. Denis has been matched up against like every lightweight in the past couple of weeks. First people saying it's going to be him versus like Oliveira. Then it was going to be him versus Fazeev. Some people said it's going to be him versus Hooker, but Mykano versus St. Denis. Really liked that fight. Big opportunity for both of them right there. I think it's going to be such a war as well. I mean, maybe we'd all get Cyril Garn in Paris, but Mykano versus Benoit St. Denis. The winner's going to get a big fight like top five maybe maybe not Ben Moss in these because last time that happened he got fraud checked but at least for Mykano he could get a top five opponent I think it's a really good fight they've both looked great recently Paul Ben Moss and he's getting KO'd so I like that fight too a lot on that same card, we've got Ferez Zian versus Matt Frivola. Matt Frivola's been wanting to fight in Paris for a while. He's got this thing on Twitter where he just wants to fight in Paris. And I think it's a winnable fight for him. Obviously, in his last fight didn't go too well. Got, got KO'd by uh, Benoit saying that he's the winner of this card. But Matt Frivola is a dangerous dude. And I think he's going to beat Ferez Zian. I think my only prediction for this fight is Matt Frivola to win. And I mean, he's always wanted to fight in Paris. So I think that's another really good fight. And we also have Chris Gutierrez versus Javid Bash right now. I think this fight was... I think this has been scheduled multiple times. I might not be correct on this, but I think it was supposed to be for UFC Saudi Arabia. Then it got moved to UFC Abu Dhabi, the fight night between the Magomedov and Sandhagen. And now it's been moved to UFC Vegas 95. I don't know what keeps causing this fight to get moved. Maybe they thought the Abu Dhabi card had too many fights on it because it is absolutely stacked. But Bashrat versus Chris Gutierrez this is a good fight. I want to see it. And as long as we're still getting to see the fight, big opportunity for Bashrat as well, because if he can beat Gutierrez, that, you know, that's got ranked upon it written all over it. So those are the main fight announcements. We've also got a few other fight announcements. We have um, obviously Shamil Gazir versus Dontel Mayers. The return of Shamil Gazir after he had one of the funniest fight night main events this year against Rosenstruck. That's going to be super interesting to see. We've got Li Jingliang, the leech, finally back. Everyone's been asking where he's gone. He's finally got a fight booked. Michael Moraes versus Neil Magny. It's either going to be Michael Moraes continuing his streak. Uh, you know, one of the big, better prospects in the welterweight division getting a ranked fight. Well, I mean, he's getting a ranked fight. Or it's going to be Neil Magny once again delivering a big fraud check. 
Jack after his fight with Mike Mallet, where he fraud checked Mike Mallet. And even in, we've had some other announcements as well, even for UFC Denver tomorrow. I mean, Gene Sill versus Drew Dober. I know I've predicted this fight, but I mean, this is another great fight that has been, you know, announced on really short notice, especially for Gene Silver considering the fought this week. But those are the major fight announcements this week. But apart from fight announcements, Alex Pereira's former opponent is now looking to join the UFC. So it's kind of like there's a whole full circle moment going on with Alex Pereira right now. So Artem Vakitov, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Alex Pereira's former opponent, who has actually beaten Alex Pereira, has now kind of been disappointed with everyone calling Alex Pereira one of the best kickboxers in the world, considering he's beaten him, and now said he wants to settle the issue between the two of them in the UFC octagon. Um, this is going to be crazy if this happens. It's kind of like a full circle moment because you've got Pereira, who obviously came to the UFC, beat Adesanya. If Artem does the same thing to Alex Pereira, that's going to be crazy. And it's kind of crazy as well because I swear it was only a few weeks ago when Alex Pereira's former MMA opponent, who beat him in MMA, is now in the contender series. It's almost as if like everyone who's ever beaten Alex Pereira is now forming and looking to join the UFC, which I don't blame, and it's where the cash is. But uh, yeah, he basically just says he doesn't understand all the hype on Pereira and why he's being called the best striker when he's beaten him before. Pereira's not really said anything to it. He said, be careful. The chances are we're never going to see this Artem guy get in the UFC or at least climb the rankings. But if that was to happen, that would be crazy because like I said before, it's kind of like a full circle moment. But on the topic of Alex Pereira, even Anthony Joshua has noticed him and he now wants him to make a boxing debut. Not sure that's probably the best move for Alex Pereira. There's no way that Dana White is ever letting Anthony, is ever letting Alex Pereira leave the UFC to go box. But um, I mean, we've seen Pereira box before. I think he's got like a 1-0 record in boxing. I think he'd be pretty successful in boxing as well as long as he's not fighting like a top, top level boxer. But yeah, Pereira's former opponent looking to join the UFC. Maybe this is the beginning of a huge trilogy, like Alex Pereira versus Adesanya. Pretty unlikely, but who knows. Anyway, the UFC lightweights have been uh, have been beefing each other on Twitter, mainly Chandler, Poirier, and McGregor. So Chandler's basically been calling out a couple of the lightweights. He called out Islam Makachev. He's now kind of thrown a little bit of shit on Dustin Poirier. And Dustin Poirier went in on him, man. I mean, even on Twitter, just flexing about the fact that he beat him and how Chandler's not fought since. And even he even went on Ariel Helwani's podcast to shame Chandler because Dustin Poirier, this dude, hates Michael Chandler. I don't know if it's the nice guy persona that he sees through or what it is, but this dude absolutely hates Michael Chandler. Islam Makachev's basically said that, listen, Chandler, I don't want you talking about anyone. You're here for one reason and one reason only, and that's the fight with Conor McGregor. And he's not wrong. That is the only reason Michael Chandler's still active in the UFC. Well, trying to be active in the UFC is because he wants to fight with Michael Ch with Conor McGregor. Even Rafael De Sanchez has piped up and said... I'm up here, buddy. We haven't seen you yet. Basically saying that Michael Chandler isn't at the top. And to be honest, he isn't. I mean, he's, he's got two wins in the UFC against Dan Hooker and Tony Ferguson. And he's lost the other three. So he's not exactly a top, top fighter, at least from his resume in the UFC. And Armand Sarukian, I know this is quite old, but I thought this was funny as well. How Armand Sarukian basically just mocked Michael Chandler for consistently losing fights. He said, you could have had a couple fun fights and lost them all, which is true because Chandler, no one's trying to say that he's boring. He's a fun fighter. He just can't win. It's almost as if he loses every fun fight that he has so that's everything regarding pretty much michael chandler and it now conor mcgregor's kind of in an instagram comment sections shaming khabib magomedov because obviously have you had that thing where he's in debt and now mcgregor's kind of mocking khabib you know trying to say that you know he's in debt and he's a scammer said the same thing about dustin poirier I think McGregor just absolutely despises Khabib. It seems like Khabib's always in the, always talk, getting talked about by Conor McGregor. But that's pretty much everything regarding the UFC lightweights. I don't think anything's going to happen from this. The only fact that I can actually see happening out of all these guys is McGregor Chandler, but even that's on hold. So I don't know what's going on with that. But talking about scammers. Hamzat Chimaev has now this week been exposed as a scammer. Um, so essentially he went on and promoted on Twitter some sort of cryptocurrency. I think it was the Smash cryptocurrency, which essentially plummeted in stock after the first day of release. And he's had a lot of controversy over this as Chimaev. Um, people have been coming at him. People have been attacking him. And he's had to get his manager and his team to apologize. He hasn't actually apologized himself. He's actually get his, had to get his manager to apologize for this. So essentially Chimaev's kind of been kind of been scamming people around. And this isn't the first time he's happened before. He's done this last year as well. He was promoting a lot of crypto last year, obviously doing some dodgy stuff. And I can't help but think how much Chimaev stock has dropped. This dude went from one of being the most promising prospects in the UFC, one of the most reliable prospects, the future of the UFC. And nowadays, he's kind of just this guy who's pulling out of fights, getting sick, having underwhelming performances, missing weight, and now he's gone to scamming. And I feel like his career's in the, in the dirt right now. I'm not saying he can't make a comeback, but his stock has completely plummeted. And I just want to fit Alex Pereira in 
into every conversation. But it feels like Alex Pereira has kind of become the guy that we all thought Chimaev was going to be, this successful champion who's putting on fun fights and fighting regularly. Chimaev's now kind of been forgotten by the MMA community. He had a lot of hype leading up to his fight with Whitaker, but after that, no one's really talking about him. So, yeah, hopefully Chimaev can sort his life out, get a big fight, stop, you know, falling ill to his immune system, get a big fight in the middleweight division. But apart from that, this dude seems to be getting in headlines every couple of weeks, and it's not for the right reasons. But before we talk about UFC Denver, we'll talk about what happened last week, so obviously... No UFC last week. We just had Jorge Masvidal versus Nate Diaz. A boxing match that had a lot of slack leading up to it because no one really wanted to watch these guys fight. But to be completely honest, it wasn't that bad of a fight. Like, to be honest, I, I, listen, I wasn't expecting a high-level boxing match, but it wasn't that bad. They both went for it. Although there was a lot of controversy over who won the fight. Nate Diaz ended up winning, but a lot of people, including myself, thought that Masvidal got, got enough to get the win. Um, some people think that the, the promotion's, you know, kind of rigged. Wouldn't surprise me in a boxing match like this if it was rigged, but I'd just love to see these guys fight in MMA. I feel like Masvidal and Diaz, boxing's kind of fun, but if these guys were to go BKFC or just MMA or even on Masvidal's bare knuckle MMA promotion. I feel like if these guys really want to show how violent they are, why do a boxing match? Go back to MMA, fight in the UFC, fight in PFL, fight in some form of MMA or bare knuckle promotion if we were all talking about violence. But they had a boxing match. Wasn't too bad. It was just a cash grab. But at least we got to see more from this fight than what was it? Anderson Silva versus Chael Son. And that was, that was horrible. But... UFC Denver is this week. Pretty good fight night, to be honest with you. Obviously, Ros Namunes and Tracy Cortez. Big opportunity for Tracy Cortez. The only problem is I'm not expecting big friends from this fight, and I really hope it isn't as bad as it is on paper. I mean, Ros Namunes holds the crown for the most boring fight in UFC history, which isn't good off the bat. And I mean, Tracy Cortez... I mean, she's never finished anyone in the UFC. So hopefully the main event is better than what we expect it's going to be. I'm hoping it's going to be somewhat interesting. And if Tracy Cortez can win, that's a big opportunity for her. But we've got some decent fights on this card. Like I said before, Drew Dober versus Gene Silver. You can almost bet the house that it's going to end in a KO. We've got, obviously, Gabriel Bonfim on this card. Christian Rodriguez on this card as well. And like I said before, we've got Joshua Van, one of the biggest prospects in the flyweight division on this card as well. But that's UFC Denver. Pretty decent fight. Now, at least it's in front of a crowd and, you know, it's not in front of the Apex but that's pretty much everything that has gone on in combat sports this week let me know if i missed anything out let me know your thoughts on the card this weekend everything that's been going on and discussed in this video and if i missed anything out so yeah thank you for watching